Yesterday we were at a team meeting for a walk and there was a woman who was giving a talk and it was pretty early on in her talk and I, and I heard these words from Holy Spirit and he said, this is going to be a message of hope. And then immediately after I heard this is going to be a message of hope, she was talking about her life, and the very next words, right after I hear this, she said, at this point in her life, she said, I had no hope in my life. And her, her talk was really, uh, really excellent. It was good. And it was. I mean, she said hope, I don't know how many different times, after I had no hope in my life. And, and I was thinking about, I had hope on my mind all afternoon and evening after her talk and 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 I immediately I say immediately it wasn't immediately but not too long after I was thinking about it I thought of a verse in Hebrews in Hebrews chapter 6 and we're just going to read uh, a little bit <clears throat> verses 9 through 12 Actually, 9 through 20, excuse me. 9 through 20. He says, uh, But beloved, we are confident of better things concerning you. Yes, things that accompany salvation. Though we speak in this manner. For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, which you have shown toward His name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister, and we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end, that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. For when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply you. And so after he had patiently endured... He obtained the promise. For, me to, for men indeed swear by the greater, and an oath of confirmation is for them an end of all dispute. Thus God, determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise, the immutability of His counsel confirmed it by an oath, that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence behind the veil, where the forerunner has entered for us, even Jesus, having become high priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Now, last week, I know... The message was um, intense. The message was uh, not necessarily an easy one to hear. Sometimes the ones that aren't easy are the ones we most need to hear. Amen. <laughs> but not the easiest to hear. And one of the things that I said was that some of you are not as far along as you think that you are. In, in your walk with the Lord. And probably on some levels could apply to all of us. <coughs> but I think Holy Spirit, uh, He brought me to this section of Scripture for several reasons, but one of them specifically was to address that comment. That some of you are not as far along in your journey as you think you are. Because He didn't, you know... Sometimes, and I remember it was Todd and Carrie Ann at an identity weekend a year or two ago. And they came up for a word from the Lord at the end of the, the identity weekend. And I had a not good word to give them. I mean, it was just not, I was like, Lord, do I have to give this to them? You know, it wasn't. And, and I could, you know, and in, fact, in fact, I think they got two words that weekend that were just yeah, we not. The other one was from not real pleasant. And and I kind of felt badly about it, but then Holy Spirit told me, and I had another word that followed that, and that is, you should rejoice 
in these hard words because I'm giving them to you because you can handle them. You will do something about them. Mm -hmm. See, we think we we hear a hard word and we kind of hang our head and and feel like we're not good enough. That's what the enemy certainly wants us to feel like. But the Lord says He disciplines those He loves. And so if He gives you a hard word, hey, He loves me enough to give me a hard word. That's not easy to hear, but what is easy to to hear is, okay, I know this is for my good. I know that he, He loves me and He's going to... He would only give me this hard word if he felt like it was for my benefit. And, and I will I, rarely do I remember words that I give to people. And I don't remember the specific word. That I really don't. But I remember what came after, and that is, I trust you to be able to give you a hard word. And so that's a good question to start with right there. Does God trust us enough to give us something we don't want to hear? Because he knows that we won't just discard it or, or that we won't hang our head and put our tail between our legs and you know let the enemy just beat us up. If he gives us a hard word, are we willing to receive it and, and move on with it and grow from it and, and let it change us, let that word change us? Because the reality is, if there's something hindering me in my walk with the Lord and I'm not aware of it, guess what? I need to be told that so that I can overcome it. But if I've never, if I don't even have a clue that it's there, how can I deal with it? How can I let the Lord deal with it? So this message, he says, you know, I, I want you to understand that God has better things for you in store. He says, Beloved, we are confident for better things concerning you. There are good things for each one of us in our walk with the Lord. Better than where we're at right now. You know, I said last week too that I, I, I didn't immediately start out doing Identity Weekends. The Lord didn't give me golden strings. I didn't even know Mark and Terry and, and all of y'all before, back then. And, and but, and, and I... I want you to understand this. The Lord had a lot of hard words for me along the road. Okay, there are a lot of things that the and still does. Not I haven't, I haven't arrived, but but I do know this that that I I have always tried to have a teachable heart. That's what the Lord wants from us a lot. Is if we can be teachable. I'm sure you've never had a child or someone in your life, if you're a teacher, a student, (laughs) that was doing the wrong thing and you tried to tell them and show them that they're doing the wrong thing and they just got defiant or they just refused, I I can do this. I I can, I I don't... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but that's us with the Lord sometimes. He's like, yeah, it's not going to be pleasant to hear, but would you rather keep doing it your way? Would you rather not grow closer to me? Would you rather not be able to step into the blessings that I have for you? Yeah, I've been there. <laughs> when I first started, I was... No, I didn't think that, you know... I thought, hey, I was, I'm okay. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm making it. This. You know, I'm going yeah. day by day. With it. And, and now that I look back, I, I don't even know how, who I was. Like, <laughs> like, like, who was that guy walking around there, you know, with, with, with uh, you know, mm-hmm. with sunglasses, you know, in the middle of the night, you know. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes, like, absolutely. Now it's just clear. And, and Jason, yeah. you don't look like the same person. No, and, you don't. Since you came here, you, you look completely different. There is a, a your countenance is different. There, it's lighter, it's brighter. It, it is it is vastly different than when you. Well, well, I have a learning heart. Mm-hmm, you do. I'm, I'm able to, to you know. Yes. Get in and without any any blocks, without any mm-hmm. curtains or yeah. You know, nothing. It's all there. I hear you, and that's good. But I I received a lot of hard words. And things I didn't want to hear. 
And, and again, to go back to that song, uh, trust in you. When you don't, you don't move the mountains that, that I need you to move and you don't part the waters that I, I want to walk through. When, when there are things that I want that God's not doing, it's a matter of being teachable and trusting. But if you can be teachable, if you can be teachable, God can do miraculous things through you. He can. And that has been because I used to be so unteachable. Okay? This, this is coming from somebody that used to feel like they had all the answers. I used to feel like I knew more than everybody else. And it just showed how little I knew. But I, I, I was prideful. I was arrogant. I was not just arrogant. I was spiritually arrogant. I was spiritually judgmental. And, and all of these things. And, and you may think... You didn't know me back then, and, and I, I know, like, I'm not saying I was this evil person, but I know what was in my heart. But because I finally got broken in a good way, and I realized where I had been, I have tried really, really hard with the help of the Lord to always be teachable. Yeah. I wish that above, not above all things, but one of the very top things that you could ever learn in life is to let, be teachable before the Lord. Yeah. If you have that, the Lord can do great things with you. So here, he says, we have, we're confident of better things for you. We know it, it may be tough right now, but there are better things ahead. And, and that's what the Lord is saying to you. Yeah, I gave you a hard word last week. But it's because I have something better for you. And you can't get to the better until you deal with what you've got to deal with. And if you think you're farther along, and it wasn't just that. There may be individual things that the Lord talked to you about dealing with uh, for, for that. But I do know that one specific thing the Lord did bring to my, my remembrance for this, this morning. And that is, you know, if you think you're somewhere that you're not and you continue to go through that in that way, um, you will, you're not going to be able to, to step into the better things. In fact, you're going to be stepping into the snares. You're going to step into the quicksand. You're going to get in that miry pit. You're going to, to fall because the Lord will humble you. He will be the one that says, uh-uh, this is not where you need to be. And I didn't do everything right, and I don't certainly don't want to make it sound like I did. But even when I made a mistake, the Lord lovingly and patiently was with me, and I tried to learn from my mistakes. And, and if we, we, you, you will learn many more lessons from your mistakes than you will from your successes. And if we would simply do that too, our lives would be very different. Because you're, you're less likely to, to make that same mistake again if you're learning from them. And have patience. Patience. Yeah. Do it in His timing. And yes. Yeah. And that's really what He says here. He says in verse 12, well in verse 11, He says, And we desire that each of you show the same diligence to the, the full assurance of hope until the end, that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Some of you have an idea of what you would like and what even what, what the Lord has put in your heart to do or, or to you have a vision and a, a passion for something greater than where you're at right now. Okay? But you gotta be patient. You, you gotta let the Lord do it. You gotta make sure you're not running ahead of Him. And, and you got to listen to those hard words, pull back on the reins, step back and let him catch up and get ahead of you. And then you follow him. And he says, if you'll do that, then you're going to be able to step into the promises that God has for you. Tiffany? I have a question. Mm -hmm. Is that tied to self-gratification when you have trouble? It can be. It can be. Okay. Uh, you know, we, we live in... Um, a society that just wants things now, okay? We, we don't like to wait. I mean, how many of you have been at Walmart or at a store and you get so irritated and frustrated because the lines are long? 
<laughs> you about the two people in front of you. Yeah. <laughs> I've been there. But they have a lot of stuff. That's right. But you know what? The Lord told me one day I was, I was in the line and I was in a hurry to go about doing something. And there were no easy ways to go through the, the checkout line. I mean, and I was getting, you know, and, and the Lord said, do you trust me? I said, I, I direct your steps. If, if there's no easy way out, don't you think I've got you where you need to be? But think about this. You wait in line at Walmart. You're talking 5, 10, maybe 15 minutes of your day. Yeah. It's really not that big of a wait. Usually, it's way bigger in our mind than it actually yeah. is. Yeah. I'll tell you one of the worst than that is when you're sitting there at the stop sign. And I did this this morning, and I was waiting for the guy to go because he had the right of way. And I'm like, seriously, you just going to sit there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got donuts in the back seat. <laughs> so, but that's but, who we are. But yes, that is. I mean, that's the society that we live in, and and a lot of it is. Self gratification. We just want it. We want it now. We want it to, you know, to benefit us. Um, I mean, if we, you know, and, and I joke with David a lot of times. I said, you know, we'll, we'll go someplace and it's busy, and I'm like, these people did not get the memo that they were supposed to stay home. You know, <laughs> and that's the way that we would like for it to be. It's just easy. But what if God has something for us in the checkout line at Walmart? I mean, we heard about yesterday about a, a lady that prayed at the avocados in Walmart because there was a man that sounded like probably not somebody that everybody's going to just want to be around. And he was just needing to know somebody that, that God loved him and cared about him. But if we're focused on ourselves, if we want to, I mean, I heard, I have to be careful here. There's nobody in this room, but some know them. Uh, but I heard a pastor's wife one time say that uh, if I ignore you at Walmart, don't be offended. She said, I'm, I'm there on a mission, and that's what I'm, I'm there to get this done. And, you know, and I, I just thought, how sad that, that you have to tell people, I'm probably going to ignore you. Hurtful. And, and how hurtful it is when you are there and you pass somebody... And they just pretend like they don't even see you. Probably do see you, but they might not have. But either way, it, it is, it's rejection. And, and she was trying to say, justify what she was doing and trying to just say, you know, it's all right. Don't, don't worry about me being that way. If, if that's our agenda to avoid people so that we can get our stuff done, we're not being very Jesus-like. <laughs> because wherever Jesus was at, He was focused on the people. And it may not be praying by the avocados, or it may not be ministering somebody in a checkout line, but it can, it can be simply seeing somebody and saying, hey, how's your day? You know, smiling. Genuinely, I don't mean, you know, putting on a... but. We've got to see people. We've got to be more focused about other people than us. Yes. But, yeah, go ahead, Todd. You know, I, I see what kind of bothers me is when I'm driving and people are getting on. They're supposed to yield and let people come, you know, just come yep. in. And it's a, but me and Carrie have talked about that because I just get, I used to get so angry at that kind of stuff, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I made great I strides. <laughs> I made great strides. I don't talk about it here as much. You just get very angry. <laughs> anyway, but it, it's for myself. I had to look at myself that it's an entitlement. Yeah. I feel like I have the right, yep. and no one else does. Get out of my way. Yep. You yep. know, and I had to really start looking at that. Yeah. <laughs> but you know the other yeah. side of that is too I can remember also one night me and Kim went into Brookshire's and there was a lady that walked up behind us and she had three or four cans of this baby powder I didn't know what it was it was some kind of formula or whatever it was 
And something was just telling me, you know, Holy Spirit says, you know, pray for that lady's stuff. Because mm -hmm. you could tell by looking at her, she was struggling. Mm -hmm. Well, she says, no, you don't want to do this. She said, this stuff is very expensive. Well, what Kim and I had was like 12 bucks. Mm -hmm. Well, she sets these three or four cans up there and she brings it up and it's like $85. And I'm like, really, Lord? <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, you know, long story short, what Ed paid for it, she was just as happy as she could be when she got out there at the car with her husband when they were out there, and they were just very, you know, appreciative of it, you know. But, you know, it's just one of those things, and, and we didn't lose any money because of it, but it's just one of those things. I think the Lord likes to get your attention, you know. Yep. It's, it's not the money, son. Yep. That, that's my money uh -huh. I gave to you. Yep. You blessed somebody else. That's right. Yeah. So. That's right. <clears throat> and, and who's to say how he used that to affect that lady, exactly. you know. Uh, and, and so, yeah. But, so we're, we're trying to be teachable. We're trying to be patient. You know, we spent a long time talking about the promises of God. And he says here, if you want to step into the promises, you're going to have to endure and you're going to have to be patient. And we want those now. And we feel entitled. We're like, Lord, this is what your word says. And, and sometimes it is. If we will have faith and have a, a sincere heart, it can be now. But a lot of times, especially for the bigger picture of our life, we may have an idea. Sometimes it's the wrong idea. Even sometimes it's the right idea. It's just a matter of timing, though. It's, it's yeah, things aren't where I would like them or want them to be. But what I have to understand is that I don't want to lose sight of this. And this is, this is the reason I'm, I'm preaching this this morning, okay? The Lord says, I don't want you to lose sight of what's down the road. Yeah. You need to hold on to the hope of that promise, of, of whatever I've, I'm, I've given you for a vision of your life and for your ministry and things like that. Yeah, there may be a little bit different. It may change along the way. But He says, you hold on to that hope, but let me do it in my timing. The hope is what we've got to hold on to. The better things, yeah, hold on to the better things. The hope of that, we know His plans. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans I have for you, plans to give you a future and a hope to prosper you. Yeah, hold on to that hope. And that's what all of this is about, is, is holding on to the hope. And He says in uh, verse 19, He says, This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. Now, I never, I, this is added to my Bible just this morning. What verse is that? I, this is verse 19 of Hebrews 6. Oh, okay. I thought it was off. Okay. I, I, know, I know the first part of this. I've known it for years. The, this hope we have is an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which, the, which enters the presence behind the veil. He talks about how Jesus has already gone before us. I've never seen hope as a way to enter into the presence of God. He says, if you will hold on to the hope in my timing, but if you will hold on to the hope that I've given you, you're going to be able to enter into my presence. Wow. There are two things, though, that we have a barrier of. One is if we try to make that hope happen now, yes. you, you miss the presence of God. Because you're trying to do it on your timing, not His timing. But the second thing is, and this is where I was starting to go earlier before we even started worship, is the enemy. We, we talk about how Satan tries to steal our joy. We say that a lot. Mm -hmm. But I've told you, Satan can't steal your joy because joy is a choice. Right. You, you can't steal something that you, you, know, you can give it away. Yeah. But he can't steal it. There's, it's no. But you know what he can steal? Your hope. And he tries to discourage you. He tries to get you to chase after other things and think that they're what, what the real thing is. And, and we we're talking about all the sickness going on. How many of you have been in the in the midst of a really either serious sickness or maybe it's not serious on on a scale of like what Jan's going through. Uh, or, or some of us have dealt with it different times, but maybe it's just you're in the middle of the flu, or you're in the middle of five weeks of coughing, and you know what? It's easy to get discouraged. Yeah. 
in sickness. It's easy to lose your hope and not just sickness. It's when, when you're going through a lot of rough times, whatever it is. But that's when your, your hope can be stolen. And again, technically, you, you can't steal hope because it's something that you can hold on to. But I, I do think Satan tries to steal hope more than he tries to steal joy. Uh, certainly, he tries to get us to give that both away. But well, if he get the hope, he'll get the joy. That's right. that's right. That's right. Sometimes <clears throat> Satan gives us what I might call a false joy, where he he will tell us, "Well, this is what's going to bring you happiness," you know, and then this is what's going to happen in the future, and it, and it's really that's not meant for us, you know. Yep, that's right. Um. There are, and I'm, I'm not going to use, we'll see if we pick this up back another time, but there is one verse I wanted to see if this is the right one because I didn't write down exactly what it is. Yes, um, Proverbs 13, 12. Proverbs 13, 12 says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. And, and literally, you can become sick, physically sick, because you've lost the hope for your life. The hope of what God's doing in your life. You feel like God has abandoned you. You feel like God isn't, doesn't really care about what's going on in you. Uh, or you've just been so discouraged and so worn out by the fight that you don't even want to fight anymore. And, and you, you, But hope deferred. It means you have a hope, but... It just never seems to be coming uh, to to fruition. Now, part of that is it can be that it's not God's timing. Part of it, though, is because we're doing something that is preventing it from coming to fruition. I use this a lot, but the, the, the children of Israel, when they went through the wilderness, should have just taken them a few days, took them 40 years. And not because God didn't want it to happen. He wanted it to happen. They blocked it. And then only two of them got to enter in. And so sometimes, yes, it's it's a matter of God saying, it's not time yet. Trust me. Wait on me. And sometimes the Lord is saying, catch up to me. <laughs> stop doing, Stop worrying about all this other stuff and come where I need you to be. But if you don't stop making it about you, you're never going to make it about me. Mm-hmm. But hope deferred, and and mom can a lot of times she shares about she, she her heart she had heart issues because um, she felt like the Lord kept dangling a carrot out and then every time she'd get there he, she felt felt it wasn't God doing that but she felt and the enemy told her that he was yanking that carrot away and he would never let her get it and and. Literally, she, you know, had almost died. Uh, part of it was because of she was out of the fear of the Lord and she was listening to the lies of the enemy. But I think we've all been there where it's like, you know, Lord, this is supposed to happen and it's not happening. And sometimes we, we can make a choice to get angry at God or we can make a choice to endure and wait patiently and make sure that we're not the one blocking it from happening in our lives. Now, wrapping this up, but back in Hebrews, I just want to focus one last time on verse 19. We have an anchor, and an anchor is only as secure as what it is attached to. If it is not attached to something secure and it breaks away, it's not going to hold you. If it's attached to Jesus, the rock, you're not going anywhere no matter how strong the storm is. No matter what comes your way, it's going to hold you in place. He's going to hold you in place. But the hope, now hope, the Greek word for hope means a joyful expectation of good. Now think of it in that way. How do you, if you lose, if you just think that the other shoe's about to drop all the time, you've lost your hope. If you're expecting something bad to happen, you've lost your hope. A joyful expectation of good. Even in the midst of trying difficult times, you always need a joyful expectation 
of good. Don't ever lose sight of that. Don't ever lose hope. Because once you do, you're going to drift away because you've lost your anchor. And Tiffany, I made a comment this morning, you know, and it was a, I was speaking ill about something that, you know, well, what if, what if this part gets lost or something? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And she said, no, no, you've got to have, you've got to have hope. You've got yes. to be positive about, uh, you know, the outcome of what's going to happen. You yes. Know? And so we prayed on, on that, you know, and I, I caught myself, she caught me, I caught myself speaking ill. have been waiting because of the snow. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. it hasn't come. So. That's good. So that I could relate yes. to that, that little point, yeah. Absolutely. So, yes, you may not be where you think or thought you were. You you might be ahead of God. You may be trying to rush His plans. I don't know. But I know this. God has good in store for you. Amen. He has good in store for me. We have to endure whatever we're going through. We have to be patient. Even if it's not going quite... Even if there's a long line at Walmart, we have to be patient. What do you say to someone, and I'll say myself, who's always had a <coughs> hardship and struggle, you know, because of where yeah. I put myself, yeah. and then to step into being a, a true follower of Christ, and then yet to endure some more <coughs> hardship. I'm trying to <coughs> outweigh... <coughs> The negative with yeah. where, do you understand what I'm saying? And, and, and the, the reality is, and, and I've said this before, you know, bad things are going to happen. Tough times are going to be there. It doesn't matter how much you love the Lord. We live in a hard world with a horrible enemy. Yes. So it's all about perspective, okay? The, the one thing, and, and this is the thing that you cannot ever lose sight of, and that is the goodness and the character of God. If you lose sight of that, if the enemy can get you to lose that, he's got you. And I don't mean got you as in you're not going to be saved. I mean that he's got you totally off focus because then you get angry at God. Then you get frustrated that he's not doing what you think he needs to be doing in the timing that you think he needs to do it. And so the hope that we have to have is that God is good all the time and he has good plans for me, even if I'm in a hard time now. It may be for discipline purposes and we can rejoice. And and that's what James says. Rejoice whenever you're going through difficult times because it's building character in you. It's building these certain attributes that God needs in you to be the person that he needs you. But if no matter what happens in our life, no matter how horrible it is, I refuse to, to go down the path that God is anything other than good and anything other than having good plans for me. Okay? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so he's our anchor, and wherever you're at, whatever you're going through, Just know, if he gives you a hard word, receive it with joy. Mm -hmm. Because the hope is, it's going to get you to where you need to be quicker because you've heard that word than if you hadn't. Okay? I have a question. Sure. Um, Someone once told me that, you know, they had put their hope in... In, in something, and and I and I believe it was a, a promise from God's word, you know, mm-hmm. um, and uh, realized later that um, they shouldn't have been hoping for that because their hope should have been in Jesus. Yes. And I really had a check in my spirit with that, and I really struggled with that because it was from God's word. It was a promise that He gave. So if you're hoping in a promise that He gave in His word. Essentially, you are hoping it's still in Jesus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know the certain situation for one thing that you're referring to, but I, I know this: that um, sometimes His promises come forth in in the ways that we want and expect them to, and sometimes I, I'm standing on a promise and I don't see it. <laughs> around me. Um, And that doesn't mean that that God, and and part of it is just because it's a promise does not mean 
that it's available to us 24-7 exactly when, when we would like for it to be. Okay? Sometimes He will withhold something because it's a test or because um, he, he was trying to, to teach us and build us or, or whatever. I, I, this is what I know is that His ways are not our ways. And, and if I'm standing, and this is where we have to be careful, is a lot of times we're standing on a promise and we can get angry at God because we're standing on that promise and it didn't happen. And so God, you turned your back on me. You didn't do what you said you would do for me. I can't allow that to keep me from, I mean, that joyful expectation of good. Yes, I know his promise says this, but there are probably other promises somewhere along the way that kind of say, you know, even, you know, and, and it's like Habakkuk. Habakkuk says, you know, even if there are no cattle in the stalls, even if there aren't anything, I'm going to praise the Lord no matter what. Whereas there are some verses that says, you know, he'll, he'll give us an abundance. He'll prosper us. He'll give us wealth. He'll, you know, if you stand on an individual promise rather than the character of God in, at large, you're going to, to, to get off track. Yeah. And, and, and I'm a big believer in standing on those promises, but it, it really goes to, we got to trust the Lord no matter whether the promises are, are coming, visibly coming forth or not. In some of that, I, I'm going to speak it from my own, my own life, is so many times, you know, I, I, at times I stand on promises and say, God, you've got to do it this way because it's a control, there's mm-hmm. fear there, mm-hmm. and if you don't do it this way, I don't know if I'm going to be okay. Yeah. And I've come to the place in my life that this is what I'm believing for. What I'm believing for, but if it doesn't, that God's got something else. There's a reason for it. Yeah. You know. And and I, and I know we got to wrap up, but um, you know, I know Job. Job was a, a righteous man, and, and if you if he looked if he took a snapshot. When he was going through the fire and all the horrible things that were going through, if he just took a snapshot, it would look like God had completely abandoned him, had completely forsaken him, had had no good intention for him. When it was the very love that the Father had for him that allowed him to go through that to show Satan, he's not going to abandon me even if I don't come through for him in the ways that you know he wanted him to. I mean, he didn't want to lose his family. He didn't want to get sick with those sores and the itchy and all that stuff. But God is not a snapshot of our life. God is overseeing our life. And if we get focused on something that we're not getting or not seeing, then our faith is is in the wrong thing, uh, and and it's it, you know we just have to trust Lord. I I may not see it, but I know you you have good for me, and I will not lose that joyful expectation of good for me. Uh, and and I think that is where we can enter into the presence of the Lord is because there's so many things that will block it if we lose if we turn. We don't see God as that truly loving God, a heavenly Father. It will keep us from entering into His presence. But no matter our circumstances, if we see and we trust, He's got good for me. It does not look like it, but He's got good for me. Then we can enter into that presence a whole lot easier because of that. Well, what happens to a lot of times that I, I know we've all seen this, but... <clears throat> that entitlement like Todd was talking about a while ago you know we wanted it but we wanted it yesterday Uh and a lot of times it may not happen for two or three weeks maybe a month maybe six months but when we've seen the change of events that happens leading up to that a lot of times we see why he didn't give it to us six months ago exactly you know and that's the that's some of the things that we're not looking at we're not looking at What's in the future? Is it best for me to do this now? Or is, yeah. is he is he having me to hold off on this for a reason? Yeah. So uh, absolutely, and I mean, I I said it last week. I'll say it again. If the Lord had given me now, I mean, back then, what I have now uh, in ministry, I wouldn't be doing it now. <laughs> uh, 
who knows where I would be, but I guarantee you I was not ready for it. I can look back and I praise the Lord that He did not give me what I wanted Him to give uh, just because I, I look back now and I see, yeah, I was not. thought I was okay. thought I was better than I was, and I wasn't. And it wasn't that I was horrible. It wasn't that I just, God knew better. And if we trust Him with that hope, He'll, it's the anchor. It's the anchor. Don't don't ever, ever, ever lose your hope, no matter what your circumstances are. Let's pray. Father God, such a good, good word of hope, Lord, that we need. Uh, and Father, yes, you give us some difficult and hard words, but we, I pray that each one of us would rejoice that you trust us enough to give us those things. And help us to learn those lessons. But no matter where we're at, no matter what we're facing, I pray, Father, that we would have an anchor in Jesus, a hope in Him that You have better things concerning us, that You're going to get us through whatever we're facing. You're going to give us more of Your kingdom, more of Your promises. And, Father, that You are going to love us no matter what. So, Father, bless each person here. Bless those of our number that are not here, Lord, those who are sick. Just bless us and help us to draw closer and closer to your heart, to enter your promise, and to have the hope that you have good in store for us no matter what. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.